Panchira is the first Neo Vision Awakened hybrid damage dealer, and so she faces incredible competition from two popular Neo Vision hybrid damage dealers. This might even turn into a dog versus cat thing. Personally, I'm more partial to dogs, and I'm getting sidetracked. So let's look at her new active abilities. Enhanced Holy Water Spellblade is a water and light absolute mirror of equity brave ability that deals hybrid damage. All the way down here for whatever reason is an Enhanced Firestorm Spellblade, which is the same thing but with fire and wind. Then there's a triple cast. Everything else is pretty much outdated, but you might find some use from Rising Elements for the incredible amount of elemental resistance. Onto her passives. She raises the damage cap if she dual wields, so make sure to give her two weapons. She also has a brave ability that can raise the damage modifiers of Tempest Spellblade to use bow levels if you want to use a Oreo Ray Chain, or Superior Mage Blade if you want to use it as a finisher for whatever reason. She also gains some additional stat boosts, which can be compounded with her previous killers to really let loose on your enemies. Now to change forms. Her brave shift doesn't have a turn duration, though it does have a 2 turn cooldown. Let's look at her active abilities. Mage Mace will increase her damage against break agents of a mace, while Mage Rod will do the same thing but with rods. Seizing Battle Stance inflicts a 75% full break. It's a bit low for a Neo Vision Awaken unit, but she's not primarily a breaker either, so I suppose it's just nice to have. Mana Drain Sword Dance is an absolute mirror of equity brave ability that drains some MP from your enemies. True Falling Elements lowers the enemy's defense and speed by 75%, and inflicts a 120% fire, lightning, water, wind, and light elemental imperil. It's a 4 turn effect on an 8 turn cooldown, so while it's not exactly reliable, it'll get the job done if you plan to finish off the enemy quickly. Pent Elemental Spellblade can be used 3 times per battle. It's a powerful hybrid absolute mirror of equity attack that deals fire, lightning, water, wind, and light damage. While it's cool that it dabbles in multiple elements, it has the potential to hamper more than help. Onto her passives. With her Trustmaster Reward or Super Trustmaster Reward equipped, she'll gain a boost to her limit burst gauge full rate. Her killer buffs have risen a little, and now she's well suited to focus on dual wielding or single wielding. Her Super Trustmaster Reward apparently has a new power that raises its elemental resistance up to 50%, but it's too bad it's not on the item itself. Let's look at her limit burst. It's a powerful lightning and wind hybrid attack that lowers the enemy's defense and spirit by 85%, and their lightning and wind elemental resistance by 125%. It's also on a low cost, so it's actually quite nice. If you want to make use of it, you'll have to give her a lot of equipment that buff her limit burst damage. Let's rank her brave abilities. Her overall strategy is pretty simple. Stick to her brave shift and spam her strongest attack. As such, you want to focus on raising the abilities on her brave shift. I recommend raising Magic Control Ring's new power for the elemental resistance and everything else is incredibly optional. Enhanced Holy Water Spellblade can give you a different source of elemental damage. Mana Drain Sword Dance could be used as needed, and Longing for Peace and Enhanced Firestorm Spellblade only affect her regular moveset. Still, if you expect to use Kanshira in her regular form, feel free to raise them as you'd like. Time to make a damage rotation. I'll be using her Lightning and Wind attacks, as her Limit Burst also focuses on those elements. On turn 1, switch forms, cast True Falling Elements, and double cast Tempest Spellblade. And then after that just spam Tempest Spellblade. Once the Imperil wears off, cast her Limit Burst to throw them back on. So how good is Kanshira? In terms of damage output, she's outclassed by both Starlet Elena and Eldrin, which, wow, shouldn't really be unexpected. She'd definitely be stronger with outside support, as her lack of self buffs severely hinders her damage output. She has a bit of utility with elemental resistance and breaks, though not to the point she can replace a dedicated unit. Overall, she has the potential of an excellent unit, but really requires some additional support to properly excel. It's a pity that the game often doesn't reward the use of multiple elements. There's something cool about the idea of dishing out different elemental attacks. Well, regardless, thanks for watching, and make sure to leave a like and subscribe. Comment below if you plan to Neo Vision Awaken Kanshira, and tell me how you plan to use her in your team.